well known, but the founder of China was known in the Chinese history as Father Sign. And uh, in Xiangfu, the first town around about 2600 BC in the Shenzi province. And you can actually trace the name China uh, is derived from Father Sign. China uh, is derived from Father Sign. And we look at this. The ancient Chinese were called the Sinai, according to the pagan historian Arian. They traveled all the way, all across Central Asia. This is the place that was inhabited by Magog. And his family, Magog, was a grandson of Japheth. Anyway, the Sinite she and his family migrated, passed by the, the Himalayas right below here, and he arrived at a river around here, which they named the Yellow River. In Chinese, it's a Huanghe. And the Shinites multiplied. Some went living here, and from there they departed over there, and those became the Japanese. The Shinites are the present day Chinese, Mongolians, Koreans, Japanese, and Taiwanese. And they were dark skinned people. Later on, to go to Albinos, the Japanese and Chinese became whiter. So now you know where the Japanese, Koreans, Chinese, Mongolians and Taiwanese derived from, from Kenya. They are Canaanite peoples. Jin took DNA from over 160 ethnic groups around East Asia. Over 12,000 samples. And so, what did you find? We did not see any even one single individual that were, could be considered as the descendant of the Homo erectus in China. Rather, everybody was a descendant of our ancestors from Africa. Rather, everybody was a descendant of our ancestors from Africa. The result couldn't have been any clearer. How did that make you feel? As a Chinese person. After I saw the evidences that we generate in my laboratory i think we should all be happy with that because after all modern humans from different part of part of the world are not so different from each other and we are very close relatives it's great thank you so africa is the home of the chinese and the people who give us a glimpse of all of our ancestors so in one sense we're all khoisan we're all sun people. It's just that my skin is slightly redder. <laughs> we would like to thank you for the information that you brought for us. This is like a dream for me. Everything predicted in their blood seems to be written in their faces. It's like looking at a composite model of every face from around the world. The eye shape of East Asians, the high cheekbones of Mongolians, the mid-brown skin that could turn darker or lighter. And these are the African sand people. chromosome DNA haplogroupings are especially significant when you're trying to figure out the ancestry of the Ainu and Jomon and the relation to other peoples. When the Y chromosome data of these people were tested, no relation to European populations was found. When the Y chromosome data of these people were tested, no relation to European populations was found. He's judging from the dark skin of the Andamanese and to the lesser extent tibeto burman people, as well as their close relationship to Native Africans, we can infer that what I will refer to as the Ds were a very dark skinned people who migrated and dispersed into Asia 60,000 years ago, probably taking a southern route. These Paleolithic Black Asians were the original human inhabitants of Asia. They 
inhabited both the mainland and various islands along the coast, native inhabitants of the Andaman Islands. The Andaman Islands is a very isolated island chain that sits in the Bay of Bengal. The indigenous people of these islands have had very little contact with other cultures for thousands of years, and it is believed that they have been isolated from the mainland for at least 20,000 years. Among them is the Sentinelese, which are just one of probably around 100 uncontacted peoples around the globe. These people have had basically no contact with the outside world, and essentially still live a hunter-gatherer lifestyle, essentially unchanged since the Ice Age, completely unaware of the world that exists off their island. What's bizarre is when you look at the physical appearance of these people and compare them with the Ainu, the two share basically no physical resemblance, despite being the closest living relatives to one another in their patrilineal line. In this respect, why happily group D is very mysterious and strange. Unlike the other groupings, the geographic distributions of the group are very distinct and widely dispersed. It is a high frequency on the Andaman Islands, but curiously has no frequency whatsoever in coastal areas surrounding the islands. It is found in Japan in high frequencies, but can't really be found elsewhere or close nearby. Furthermore, it is interesting to learn that Y. Hapler D. Group's closest relatives are again not Asian or Indian, but are in fact members of Y. Hapler Group E, which is found almost exclusively in Africa.